Hi students, we are discussing mergers and acquisitions and in this topic we are going to discuss a case study of one merger, a merger between Daimler-Benz and Chrysler Company. Uh, this is one of the most famous mergers of the last century and uh, we are going to discuss it from the perspective of human resource management. How does effective human resource management affect the success of some uh, mergers and acquisitions? And what are the factors in human resource aspect that can be uh, consequential in the success of a merger or an acquisition? So we are going to discuss it from the perspective of a case study. Uh, let's first introduce uh, the two companies. Uh, the first company is Daimler-Benz, which is a German company which was founded in 1926. Uh, the other company is Chrysler. It is also a very famous uh, American automobile company and uh, it was founded in 1925. You must be knowing a very famous car known as Mercedes-Benz, which was manufactured by, which is still being manufactured by the Daimler-Benz company. Um, both of these companies were automobile manufacturers. One was in the European market, uh, uh, one of the biggest companies in the European market, and Chrysler was the third biggest company in the American market. Uh, uh, both of these companies, they wanted to uh, achieve synergies and uh, economies of scale and uh, uh, integration between the two continents. Uh, using and learning processes from uh, both the sides of the world. And that is the reason why this uh, merger was initiated. Uh, this merger took place in um, 1998. So it's about 30 years ago. Uh, we are going to discuss this case from the perspective of human resource management. We are not going to look at the other aspects like finance or marketing. Um, we are going to talk about the HR issues. So uh, the main features of HR management in this merger um, were that as you have already started that there are four phases of, uh, a, 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 of the evolution of a merger or an acquisition. So in the pre-merger phase, HR issues were not considered to be important. Even in the second phase, the HR issues were, uh, they took the back seat. Um, uh, to the extent that even the HR heads of the companies, of both the companies, they did not know that the merger is going to take place uh, until the third phase, which was the integration planning phase in which the decision had been taken and in which the selection was made and in which the plans were all set out. Until then, the HR heads of both the companies, they did not know because the whole thing was done very secretively. Um, and then negotiations, they were dominated by most of the legal and financial aspects. So they did not consider the HR issues or HR aspects of both the companies to be important enough to bring them to table while planning and uh, setting out for this particular initiative. That is something which happened in the uh, pre-merger and uh, the second phase of uh, uh, this merger. In the third phase, the integration planning phase, then HR issues and concerns were brought into, um, uh, into discussion. But even then, uh, the only main important, the most important issue of the merger was discussed with respect to compensation. We had our managers or our employees or workforce to compensate after the particular merger has taken place. So, this issue was highlighted that the top 
मैनेजर की पेज हैं वो यूएस में और जर्मन जर्मनी में उनके अंदर बहुत डिफरेंस था यूएस टॉप मैनेजर्स दे यूज टू गेट अ लॉट ऑफ कॉम्पनसेशन अ लॉट ऑफ पे वेर एज जर्मन मैनेजर्स की पे जो थी टॉप मैनेजर्स की इतनी हाई नहीं थी वेर एज ऑन दी अदर हैंड द लोअर एट द लोअर लेवल्स द जर्मन मैनेजर्स एंड एम्प्लॉयज दे वर पेड मच बेटर दैन द यू एस मैनेजर्स एंड lower staff so you can uh, well imagine that there was a lot of gap in a lot of distance and a lot of uh, um, uh, segregation in uh, the us uh, pay system and in the german pay system it was more equitable it was flatter there were lesser differences between the top managers and the lower managers uh and this is also something which is uh, quite evident in the culture of european cultures and the american culture american culture is high in power distance and uh, european uh, culture is low in power distance so it was decided that those german managers which were will be which will be given international responsibilities they will be uh, their pay will be raised to the us level that was one of the only major concerns which were raised in this merger of uh, two huge uh, multinational companies uh then in the post merger integration phase um the hr head of both the companies they were not even involved in the chairman's integration council a chairman's integration council was made up of a number of uh, top level managers of the company and they were supposed to um, you know to look after and to monitor and to uh, effectively uh, run the merger uh, uh, of of the two companies and within that uh, within that chairman's integration council the hr head of the of both the companies they were not involved in that uh, in that council so you can well imagine how much importance the hr uh, of uh, those companies was uh, how much importance was given to them you can also see it from this fact that 1000 projects of merger integration were initiated and only out of those projects 43 were related to the hr issues uh and and board member of hr was not part of the integration council so these were uh, some of the mistakes or some of the shortcomings that uh, were uh, that took place in that merger from the perspective of hr hr was not given due imp due importance it was not involved in the uh, in the first two phases then when it was uh, involved even it was not given the due highlight and we have already studies uh, studied in one of the research studies that those organizations which involve the hr uh, in the earlier phases of the merger and acquisition they are more successful in making the merger or acquisition more successful uh, so although these were big huge companies from were from two sides of the world uh, who were supposed to be well conversant with the requirements of management they made this mistake from this perspective and uh, that led to a lot of failures uh, there there were other uh, factors of uh, the failure of this merger as well but one of the reasons could have been the hr issues which were not highlighted and which were not um uh, taken into focus while the merger was planned and executed so by 2000 in 1998 the merger took place by 2000 there was a sharp decline in profitability and share price of uh, this company it was it, it fell by 20% Uh, uh early on the company lost more than 20 top level executives so people were not satisfied they were apprehensive they were not happy with the way things were uh moving on so they left the company 
within two years, cultural issues, they emerge. Uh, a number of cultural issues were uh, such as inappropriate humor, log aapas mein mazaak karte the, to wo ek dusre ko samaj nahi aati thi. Political correctness, uh, आप जब दो डिफरेंट कल्चर से ताल्लुक रखते हैं तो वहाँ के पॉलिटिकल व्यूज को आपको समझना चाहिए आपको उनके बारे में नो हाउ होनी चाहिए सो पॉलिटिकल करेक्टनेस नहीं थी वहाँ पर देन देर वाज परसीव्ड एक्सेसिव फॉर्मेलिटी बाय इन इन फ्रॉम द पर्सपेक्टिव ऑफ द जर्मन मैनेजर्स इट वाज कंसिडर uh, it was considered to be excessively um, informal from the perspective of the American managers. It was considered to be um, uh, excessively formal. And then there were issues of sexual harassment, and then there were private relationship issues in uh, the company because there wasn't any formal policy of uh, controlling the behavior of people from both the continents. So these kind of uh, uh, weaknesses and these kind of blunders that led to huge financial losses in the coming years, particularly on the Chrysler side, which was the American side of the company. Uh, particularly, it was a failure for the uh, on, on the on the U.S. side. Uh, they were not able to cope with this uh, with this merger. They were not able to cope with the cultural issues. They were not able to cope with the uh, uh, with the political correctness that was required. Um, they were much more inflexible. Uh, there are, um, I mean, uh, um, there are instances in which it was uh, told that the German managers, they took special care to become less formal, although they had, they had uh, a culture of formality, but they tried. But on the other side, the US managers were Flag inflexible in terms of changing their behaviors. That led to a closure of several plants. Uh, there was a cut down of 40,000 jobs in early years, but even then it was not successful and the uh, merger that uh, took place, it was concluded, it ended up in 2007. Uh, and the two companies, they separated in 2007. So from this case, we have learned that uh, in order to make a merger successful, it is very important to highlight the issues that are possible to be created uh, in, the, uh, in the HR aspect of, uh, of the companies because the company is going to be run by the people. You need to understand the people's issues, first of all, in order to make the merger or acquisition work. So this is a case study which um, uh, makes us understand and reminds us that HR is one of the most important functions of an organization and particularly for mergers and acquisitions, one has to be really careful about the HR policy of an organization and to manage it well is, uh, is what is required to make the merger or acquisition successful.